Welcome to BCS Media. I'm Marie. And I'm Aiden. We are from Brown County Junior High School. Our guest is Brown County School Superintendent, Dr. Laura Hammock. Dr. Hammock, welcome to our program. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here today. We are planning a series of programs to bring you information about Brown County Schools. Our first show is getting to know our superintendent, Dr. Laura Hammock. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hammock, tell us where you are originally from and when you went, where you went to high school and college. Sure. Um, I am from Cleveland, Ohio, originally. I grew up in a little town called Rocky River. Um, I went to Rocky River High School. I graduated in 1991, which means I'm pretty old. Um, then I ultimately went to DePaul University, which is here in Indiana. And that's ultimately how I got to uh, get to stay in Indiana for the rest of my life. Yeah. So why did you choose education as a career? I chose education as a career um, because I really loved working with, with young people. Um, I actually went to college to become a lawyer, um, which I started taking classes to be a lawyer and it just wasn't my thing. I, I, I just really didn't kind of get a, a great love of, of that work, but I took a couple of classes for education my freshman year in college and I just was hooked. And so I, I never looked back and I have just loved being a teacher and a principal and, and now our superintendent. That's really cool. Thanks. I understand that you taught at Nashville Elementary School, now our intermediate school. Yeah. How did you end up in Brown County? Right. So I went to DePauw University uh, for my undergraduate uh, degree, and then that was just to be able to teach general elementary. So I had fallen in love with uh, working with students with special needs uh, when I was doing my student teaching and when I was at DePauw. So IU in Bloomington had a special program to get a master's degree in a really short amount of time. So I took that year after I graduated from college to uh, get my master's degree at IU. And when I was at IU that year, um, they had a bulletin that would be uh, issued um, to all the students that were looking for teaching jobs. And there happened to be a job that was posted for Brown County Schools. So I put in my application and I was lucky enough to be interviewed for the position. Interestingly, we're, we're t taping this here in the White House, uh, and this is where my first interview was a long time ago. Really? Uh, yeah, That's so right? Funny. Yeah. This room, actually. Wow. <laughs> um, and I was so lucky because I, I uh, was, was given the opportunity to come and work at what was then Nashville Elementary School. So I worked as a special education teacher uh, when I first started working there at Nashville. Awesome. Yeah. So what did you teach at Nashville Elementary, and what other experiences do you have at Brown County Schools? Sure. So I, um, I I taught special education for the first two years that I was there at Nashville Elementary School, and then I had the sincere honor of getting to be a sixth grade teacher at, at Nashville for six years. Um, and what's really special is that many of the boys and girls that I was able to teach at Nashville Elementary are now our parents. So they're now moms and dads, which, of course, makes me feel very old. Uh, <laughs> but they're moms and dads, and it's really neat to get to see them here with their own children, kind of getting to do the right. Brown County experience all over yeah. again. So um, I was a teacher and for six, never thought that I would do anything but be a sixth grade teacher. And then the opportunity to be principal at Helmsburg Elementary um, was, was given to me. So I was principal at Helmsburg for three years. And then I was able to come here to this office to be assistant superintendent for two. So I worked for 13 years here in Brown County before mm -hmm. I was able to kind of come back and, and be back with you all again. Well, we love having you. Yeah, we do. Oh, no, you're, you're so, so nice. sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> so what educational experiences do you have outside of Brown County School? Sure. So um, actually, I, you know, of course, worked here for 13 years. And then for the last seven, I've been in Beach Grove City Schools. Beach Grove is a school district on the south side of Indianapolis and got to be there for seven as their assistant superintendent. Um, and that was a, a really neat opportunity to do uh, something very different from Brown County. <laughs> very rural yeah. school district here, Beach Grove, very urban. So um, when the position for to be superintendent was posted here in Brown County, I just jumped at the chance. I, I, I couldn't wait for just the opportunity to interview to be superintendent here. And it's just this been great. Sweet. This is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so what were your deciding factors to accept the Brown County School superintendent's position? You bet. So I, I really, um, honestly, it was 
it felt from the beginning like it w I was coming back home. Well, you know, so <laughs> when I was looking at kind of the pros and cons of, you know, uh, switching from Beach Grove, which is a position that I love, um, to come down here to Brown County, um, I, I just came back to the place where I just felt like it would it would be like I could be giving back to the community that really gave so much to me. You know, I started teaching here and folks really helped me through and um, being back in Brown County has allowed for me to, you know, hopefully be able to give a little bit back of what was given to me. Oh, <laughs> you are the best interviewer <laughs> ever. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Hammock, how's your year going so far at Brown County School Superintendent? It's going so great. Um, we are, we're having a wonderful year. I have been so amazed by our students and teachers and staff and the community has been amazing in their support. Um, we've been doing a lot. We've been really busy. I started kind of officially on July 1st and um, it's amazing that we've already been, you know, kind of, we're in the middle of February now, which is incredible how quickly that time has gone. But I think we've been doing a lot of exciting, uh, exciting stuff that's uh, really moving our, our district uh, forward. Well, I know I've really enjoyed the year so far. Yeah. Oh, that's great to hear. So what are some of your goals for Brown County Schools? You bet. So we're really working on quite a few different initiatives um, in the district. And one of them primarily being um, our strategic planning work that we're doing with our community. So we have pulled together teachers, students, um, our staff, our parents, community members to monthly meetings where we're really trying to map out for the next five years, what we would like to see happen in Brown County Schools. So that's been a really exciting process and need to pull a whole bunch of folks together to kind of get their insight and opinion on, on what we will be doing here for the next five years. I know that the next five years are important to you guys because that's yeah, going to take yeah. you through your yeah. high school, right? Um, as well, we've been spending a lot of time uh, working with our technology department. Um, we're really proud to, to say that, you know, when we started on July 1st, um, we made it a, a point to say that we wanted to have a one-to-one -one Chromebook implementation by January, you know, kind of when the students would come back in January, and we did that. So all of our high school students now have a brand new Chromebook uh, that they can access for their educational content. And we are excited about a, a new grant opportunity that we're, we're hoping to have the same thing happen for our students at the junior high. So. We have a lot going on. We're busy every day, um, but it's all so wonderful because we're trying to make educational experiences better for you guys. Yeah. Well, we appreciate all of your hard work. Yes. And I know that um, a lot of the students at Brown County Junior High are really excited about getting the Chromebook. Oh, that's great the to high, hear. The high schoolers were pretty excited, too, because my brother and my sister are in high school. Oh, great. Wonderful yeah. to hear. Yeah, we are very excited. So what do you like best about being Brown County School Superintendent? Honestly, you guys, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's true. I, I You're so really nice. love coming to school. I love coming to school every day because we get to see you all doing amazing things in our school buildings. It is such a gift to be able to be on a side where we can, you know, help provide our teachers and our, you know, staff, you know, with the tools and resources that they need in order to make your day great. Um, and that's just a, it's an, it's an absolute blessing to get to come and see you guys do incredible things every day. My favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the challenges of being a superintendent? You bet. So uh, when you're a superintendent, you always are uh, in a oftentimes in a position where you need to make a decision. And many times I try to make our decisions for our school district based on good data, facts, information, getting, you know, kind of uh, folks at the table to kind of talk about things when you might have a difficult, you know, decision that presents. So um, we really try to be careful in our decision making. But the hardest thing I think about being a superintendent is that you, you have to make some tough decisions. And a lot of times, actually all the time, we are always trying to make our decisions in the best interest of our boys and girls. And sometimes you don't please everyone, right? So sometimes you make a decision that, you know, really makes one person happy, but makes somebody else not so happy. So like, for example, weather morning. So sometimes yeah. that's a really hard part of being a superintendent. So we go out and when we have rough weather in the morning and um, we try to make a decision that's always in the best interest of our boys and girls. And sometimes, you know, folks are happy that we call the two hour delay. Sometimes folks are not happy that we call the two hour delay. So that can be some of the more challenging aspects when you just can't get everybody okay with your decision. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you like, how do you think teaching has changed since you were in a classroom? 
teaching has changed so much since I've been in the classroom. Oh my goodness. Um, so it, it really is amazing. When I was teaching my sixth graders, we uh, technology was really just becoming kind of an embedded part of what we would do uh, during our school day. So um, we had a computer lab where our boys and girls would have kind of a special, like you would go to physical education or art or gym. Our kids would go down to the computer lab once a week, and it was really an event. And we would go down and we would um, interact with computers that we had uh, in the lab and really just kind of getting to know what a computer was all about. And then I remember specifically one day when we had these big black and white boxes show up um, in our classrooms, and it ended up being these gig just wonderful gateway computers that were going to be our personal computer to have <laughs> in the classroom so that our boys and girls could interact. And that was sure an exciting day. My students were super excited. We you know, opened up the package, and our tech guys got it all installed. And then really getting to kind of use the computer as a station ended up being something that we would do. So to go from one computer, and it was a really exciting event when that computer showed up, <laughs> to now seeing our boys and girls walking around with their own personal device as just kind of like something that we do, that really shows how much education has changed I know it doesn't seem like, uh, I'm sure you guys think that it seems like it's been a very long time, but for me, not <laughs> such a long time um, and, and very, very quickly. So we love that we are able to provide our students with access to technology, but we also really believe that still I mean, the best part of teaching was developing relationships with our students. You know, that is what, when it all comes down to it, separating out the technology, relationships are the key to, you know, that incredible opportunity to teach. So we don't ever want to ab abandon that, that's for sure. On a personal note, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm married uh, to a wonderful guy. His name is Anthony. Um, Anthony is a um, an engineer. He's my Valentine, right? No, no. Uh, we just had Valentine's Day. So I was no. lucky enough to, to yeah, have, have him to go home to last night. So um, Anthony is my husband, and he, he's an engineer. He works over in Bloomington. And we have a dog, Daisy, who is a five-year-old Labrador, and she's oh. darling, and we love her to pieces. We love to be outside. My family, um, my dad and my stepmom are still in Cleveland. That's where I you know, grew up. And my sister and her husband and my two nieces, who I love to pieces, are in Montana. They live way out there. So we miss them being close, but we love to go out and visit them in Montana. So family is really important to us. Um, we keep very busy um, with school events and, you know, going uh, to see uh, you guys perform and, and all sorts of neat activities. And um, really when it comes down to it, you know, family and, you know, our school family is is really what it, what it all comes down to. So that's me. <laughs> I go to bed early. I wake up early. <laughs> that's kind of me. I'm kind of boring. Oh, I don't think you're boring. I don't think you're boring. I don't think so. So is it true you get up every morning around 4.30 a.m.? And if so, why and how do you yes, do it? Yes, exactly. Right, like, like, like I just said, yeah, so I do. It's embarrassing. I go to bed really early, um, but I get up early. I do. I get up about 4.20 um, in the morning and I uh, like to get a little bit of work done before I even leave the house and then um, like to get over here early because we. it seems like lots of events will happen in the morning uh, before school even starts. So I really like to be here. I like to be able to help monitor the bus radios so that we know if there's accidents or anything that's happening out on the roads. Um, our bus drivers are amazing and, and do great things for us in the morning and in the evening and like to be able to, to be there to get a, a better understanding of what's going on um, out on those roads. So I, I, I go, I do wake up early, but I, I go to bed a little after nine o'clock. So <laughs> it's lights out and then I'm up, up at it the next day. True. <laughs> so, Dr. Hammock, thank you so much for being on our program. Oh, thank you guys so much. And thank you to the community for watching. Uh, this has been a really nice opportunity to get to know you all a little bit better and loving seeing you all do amazing things. So thanks for this and thanks to the community for watching. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm Aiden. And I'm Marie. Have a great day.